Hawk sent me one final report. She's on her way to Weishaupt. As for the Grey Wardens, they are fighting demons and Red Templars while staying clear of Inatori. You dealt Corypheus a significant blow, Inquisitor. The Grey Wardens carry respect in other nations. If we spread word that the Inquisition has their support... We may gain standing with nations that have suffered under the Blight. I will take the matter to Josephine. You took an army from Corypheus, but that will matter little if Orle falls into chaos. All arrangements have been made for the ball in Halam Shiral. Let us know when you are ready to proceed. Remind me what we know about the plot against Selene. The Venatori are planning some kind of attack on the Imperial Court. Corypheus may even be fueling the conflict between the Empress and her cousin, Grand Duke Gaspard. If we warn Selene, she may prove a most valuable ally against Corypheus. I'll go as soon as I am able. Good. Cullen, Josephine and I will discuss the best way to gain an audience with the Empress. Speak with us when you are ready. What was she like? Divine Justinia, or a soul, or the spirit that took her form. I read your report. I know it isn't clear, but... She seemed calm, serene even, and she guided us the whole way through. That does sound like her. She did ask me to tell you something, though. She said, I'm sorry, I failed you too. Oh. I should finish this before it slips my mind. Perhaps later we might discuss the matter further. Thank you. Adamant's influence continues, your worship. I submit Lord Livius Erimond of Virantium, who remains loyal to Corypheus. We found him alive, offering extreme resistance, likely because the Order will ask for his head. In more colorful terms. To say nothing of justice you might personally require for what was suffered in the Fade. Many places felt the pain of adamant. You will answer for a great deal. I recognize none of this proceeding. You have no authority to judge me. On the contrary, many officials have communicated that they will defer to the Inquisitor on this matter. Because they fear not just Corypheus, but Taventa, rightful ruler of every piece of ground ye trod in your pathetic life. I serve the living God. Bring down your blades and free me from the physical. Glory awaits me. Lord Eremond, any protection you thought you had has apparently been withdrawn. You will die by my hand. Petty actions. Truth lies in the next world. Another of the lingering pains of Adamant, your worship. Sir Ruth is a senior warden of the Order. She was one of the many who slit the throat of another to bind a demon. She does not contest this. In fact, she surrendered to us. She requests no mercy. She wants the public justice of the Headman's Axe. You were free to rejoin your comrades, and yet you present yourself here. There is no excuse for my actions. I murdered another of the Order. That blood marks me more than the Blight ever could. Accepting their actions while thralls of Corypheus, many treaties allow wardens any extreme if it opposes the Blight. I can't do it. I can't use the greater good to justify my crimes, as if it would create a future I could be a part of. It is wrong that this broke me. I've done worse with full sanction. I can do nothing except be an example of the cost.
You feel your life is over? There's a place for such wardens. Sir Ruth, you'll go to the deep roads. Your death may be as quick as you choose. This sends no message. This is just... an end. We've an interesting development, Inquisitor. A petition from citizens of Val Royal. They... wish to know what Andraste said to you in the Fade. They think she spoke to me. Even Leliana can't trace the rumor's origin. It may be expedient to respond to those asking for Andraste's words. It's not Andraste who saved me. Few people outside Skyhold know it was Divine Justinia who delivered you from the Fade. You could attempt to tell Val Royal citizens the truth, though it may not be as inspiring as they hope. Tell them the Inquisition's position is that the Divine saved me from the Fade, not Andraste. Very well. Some of the Devout will be discouraged, but it will placate the Chantry. I knew Stroud, you know, not well. He saved Hawk's little brother from the Blight. Not many people knew who he was, but the man was a hero when it mattered. He wasn't the first good man to fall to Corypheus. He won't be the last. This story's no good for heroes. We're taking down Corypheus before he takes any more lives. You know, sometimes when you say shit like that, I almost start to believe it. <sighs> Hawk asked me to tell everyone back in Kirkwall where she's going. I'll have to let Carver know. I'm sure he'll take it well. I'd better write some letters. Excuse me. You have remarkably little here on early to winter history. All these gifts to the Inquisition, and the best they can do is the Malefica Imperio, trite propaganda. But if you want 20 volumes on whether Divine Galatea took a shit on Sunday, this is evidently the place to find it. And that's the Dorian I know, critiquing every book in my library. I wouldn't have to if you could find some rebellious heretic archivist to join the cause. Are there rebellious archivists? Other than you, that is. If Corypheus ever starts burning masterworks of literature, I'm sure a few will pop up. Did I see something by Genitivi here? I could have sworn. What is this about, Dorian? When everyone returned, they told us about your tumble into the Abyssal Rift. You went into the Fade. Physically went in. Are you... all right? I learned a surprising amount. What happened at the Temple of Sacred Ashes, for one? Regained your memories. That's good, then. I think so. You do realize this feat hasn't been performed in over a thousand years. Corypheus and his contemporaries entered the Fade and began the Blights. In comparison. It would have been easier if you'd been with me. Without question. But I'm rather glad I wasn't. No sense of adventure? That's surprising. I've not your talent for survival, and not everyone is as discerning as I. If you can walk in the Fade, others will try to follow. Who knows what secrets Corypheus has revealed? Not all of them will be as lucky as you. What they could unleash. My advice? Keep this quiet. Let them speculate. Too many will see this as a challenge. You don't number among them. It's tempting, but I am no fool. There are enough idiots in the world who think if they just use enough blood magic, their problems will vanish. It's exactly the sort of thing I want to stop back home. This... this I don't need. What I do need is a copy of the Liberalum. I'll wager I can find Corypheus' real name. If I can prove he was a grasping ankle biter with no family to speak of, the luster would come right off. Wish me luck.
Inquisitor. I... I have been thinking. You remember everything now, yes? The explosion at Haven? The Fade? Escaping the breach? In your report, you said Justinia was with you. But only you emerged in the end. Why? Why were you the only survivor? She knew it was either her or me. And she wanted me to live. Of course. Of course she did. That's just like her. Her message to me. <sighs> I failed you too. I'm not sure I understand what that means. Did you say anything else? Anything at all? Please, if you remember. Wait. You don't know what she meant either. There are no answers in the fate. Only illusions. A warped mirror. Justinia has never failed me. I was her left hand. Now she's dead. I failed her. You've made such intriguing design choices for the castle, my dear. They must be inspired. I just let Josephine pick whatever she wants. There's wisdom in knowing when to defer to someone else's expertise, Inquisitor. And appearances are important. We can't have you mistaken for a commoner. I should look like a commoner. I need to be perceived as a woman of the people. By all means, appeal to the common folk, but be a figure that inspires them. You command an army of the faithful, outfitted by the coin of the nobility. You must be a woman who commoners aspire to be, and to whom nobles bow. My actions will inspire them. Appearances don't matter. It would be a lovely world if we were all judged purely on our conduct, my dear. But it would not be this world. The stories of your accomplishments will spread, and with them, doubt. Are you truly the woman from the tales? They will question what they've heard, but they will believe what they see. They must see someone greater than legends. If that's your standard for me, what does the Divine have to live up to? Andraste and the Maker cast very large shadows. The Divine absolutely must set the example for all Thedas. She must seem to be the embodiment of the Maker to the Faithful. She needs the authority of the Maker and the charisma of Andraste. It will be no small task to fill that vacant throne. Writing does not come naturally to me, as I'm certain you can imagine. Let me guess, you're composing a love poem. I couldn't, not even if my life depended on it. It's not that hard. Yes, it is. Poetry takes finesse, it takes grace. You don't think you have those things? Historians will one day ask what happened at Adamant Fortress, in the Fade. I was there. I saw it with my own eyes. It must be recorded. That's an excellent idea, Cassandra. I certainly thought so, until I started writing. I still don't know what to say about the Spirit of the Divine. I saw her there, heard her voice, yet I cannot claim with certainty it was really her. The Chantry teaches us that the souls of the dead pass through the Fade, so it could have been her, yet even so. Do you really think it might have been her? A ghost? A ghost. A remnant of her hopes and memories. Her lingering will to do good. Those things are all possible. Nobody knows for certain what happens after we die. A spirit could have assumed her form, but why? It helped you, as Justinia herself would have. Perhaps it doesn't matter what she really was, then. 
It matters to me, to what I must write. I must interpret what I saw, yet I am no priest, no philosopher. I am a warrior. I believe it was the Divine. She helped us one last time. I hope that's true. I want to believe it. When I realized we were physically in the Fade, I was terrified, almost beyond reason. The last time such a thing happened, we created Darkspawn. We created Corypheus. The world needs to know the truth this time. No more legends lost to the ages. Yes? How do you stay so civil with everyone, Josephine? Bonds of circumstance among the nobility are fickle. Civility is the only constant everyone admires. And I do deplore rudeness in those who know better. Does it even become a strain sometimes? Well, it can be trying. There is no shortage of self-regard among the nobility. The game can be wearying, discouraging, and extremely baneful. But honestly, I'd miss meeting people. I've made the most fascinating friends. Better than making piles of interesting enemies. I've had both, sometimes depending on which way the wind has been blowing at the time. But worth it, all in all, I think. Let's speak later. Another time. Have a thing for strapping young Templars, I see. What's this about? Oh, nothing. Just something I find rather adorable about you. I should go. Here I thought we were just getting to the good part. I expected the hero Ferelden to be at Adamant, but she was not with the other Wardens. She studied the Blight after killing the Archdemon, and may know something that could help us. If you like, I can have agents look for her. That sounds like a wise choice. I'll make preparations in the war room. Now, was there anything else? Anything I should know? I have nothing to report at the moment. I'll leave you to your work. You walked physically through the Fade. Please tell me what you remember. I had... visions. Echoes of what happened to me the first time. The Divine was there, or something like her. Manifestations of your own mind, perhaps. Or external memories awakened by your presence. I suppose there's no way to tell. No one else has physically entered the Fade since the Magisters assaulted the Golden City. Oh, I'm positively envious right now. Inquisitor, if you're looking for the commander, he's gone to speak with Seeker Pentagast. You asked for my opinion, and I've given it. Why would you expect it to change? I expect you to keep your word. It's relentless. I can't... You give yourself too little credit. If I'm unable to fulfill what vows I kept, then nothing good has come of this. Would you rather save face than admit... Forgive me. And people say I'm stubborn. This is ridiculous. Cullen told you that he's no longer taking Lyrium? Yes, and I respect his decision. As do I. Not that he's willing to listen. Cullen has asked that I recommend a replacement for him. I refused. It's not necessary. Besides, it would destroy him. He's come so far. Why didn't he come to me? We had an agreement long before you joined us. As a Seeker, I could evaluate the dangers. And he wouldn't want to... risk your disappointment. 
Cassandra, did you refuse Cullen's request because he's wrong, or because you want him to be wrong? Mages have made their suffering known, but Templars never have. They are bound to the Order, mind and soul, with someone always holding their Lyrium leash. Cullen has a chance to break that leash, to prove to himself, and anyone who would follow suit, that it's possible. He can do this. I knew that when we met in Kirkwall. Talk to him. Decide if now is the time. Maker's breath. I didn't hear you enter. I... Forgive me. Cullen, if you need to talk... You don't have to... I never meant for this to interfere. I believe you. But whatever good it does, promises me nothing if I cannot keep it. You asked what happened to Ferelden's Circle. It was taken over by abominations. The Templars, my friends, were slaughtered. I was tortured. They tried to break my mind, and I... <laughs> How can you be the same person after that? Still, I wanted to serve. They sent me to Kirkwall. I trusted my Knight Commander, and for what? Hmm? Her fear of mages ended in madness. Kirkwall Circle fell. Innocent people died in the streets. Can't you see why I want nothing to do with that life? Of course I can. I... Don't. You should be questioning what I've done. I thought this would be better. That I would regain some control over my life, but these thoughts won't leave me. How many lives depend on our success? I swore myself to this cause. I will not give less to the Inquisition than I did the Chantry. I should be taking it. I should be taking it. This doesn't have to be about the Inquisition. Is this what you want? <sighs> no. But... These memories have always haunted me. If they become worse, if I... If I cannot endure this... You can. <sighs> All right. What do you need, my friend? I want to talk to you about the cure for tranquility. It's not a cure. Not truly. Mages who were once tranquil lose all control over their emotions. They become irrational, unable to focus. Perhaps that state eventually passes and they can be helped, but it will take time to investigate. There are so many tranquil. They deserve a chance to heal. I would not want news of a cure to spread until we know for certain we can help these people. Once we have that, however, then I will spread the word myself. That's enough for now. Another time, then. He fights for the people. What people? Someone I knew once described Adamant to me. Adamant is, and always will be, the Order, he said. A guardian on the edge of the Abyss. The lone soul that stares into oblivion and doesn't waver. That's what Warden Commander Clorel tried to be. Well, they all tried to be. I'm told her Wardens never wavered. They went to their deaths, willingly. They died for... us. And Corypheus twisted their sacrifice to make it his own.
We stopped him. We saved most of the Wardens. But not all of them. And they died thinking they were doing something good. There's no one to blame but Corypheus. Even Clarell's intentions were righteous. Her desire to protect was so great it led her astray. It's not right. To want to do good, to be good, and have that turned against you. Don't think of what went wrong. Think of their intentions, their sacrifice. Honor their selflessness. Clarell made mistakes, but she was a great woman. And she died a great woman. It's not the armor or the trappings of the Order. It's not the... joining. At the heart of it, all a Warden is, is a promise. To protect others, even at the cost of your own life. Commander Cullen did good work at Adamant. Breached those walls like he'd done it a dozen times. Nice job with the demons, by the way. Can you think of any other tasks suitable for the judges? You sealed the main rift at Adamant, but the fortress is still a mess. Demons, Darkspawn, Mega knows what. I could take Rocky out there with some of the boys. They know how to bring down walls. We can't close rifts, but we can bury the bastards under a ton of rubble. We'll talk later. is why the Kuhn doesn't like women fighting. I should have asked Cullen. Oh, good one. <laughs> Perhaps you can take over. Gunnari training exercise to master your fear. Been a while since I needed it, but that nightmare demon was... <sighs> big. Can you explain why I'm supposed to hit you with this stick? Probably, if I try. It did involve a lot of Kunari words, though. Just hit me with the stick, all right? I need to get over this demon crap. All right. There we go. Oh, yeah. Damn demon. Who's stuck in the fade, huh? 
So we're working out your fear with a stick. Less talking, more hitting. <coughs> piece of feed, piece of crap! <coughs> and who killed you? <coughs> That's right, Iron Fucking Bull! <sighs> oh, oh, I needed that. <sighs> Thanks, boss. <sighs> and that works for you. Yep. All right then. No. But you like demons. I enjoy the company of spirits, yes, which is part of why I do not abuse them with bindings. It isn't abuse if I ask. Not always true. Also, I do not practice blood magic, which renders this entire conversation academic. He won't bind me. He's a mage and he likes demons, but he won't help. We just saw the Grey Wardens try to raise an army of demons. You want Solus to bind you. He has to! If Solus won't do the ritual to bind me, someone else could. Will. Like the Warden Mages. And then... I'm not me anymore. <laughs> Walls around what I want. Blocking, bleeding, making me a monster. Isn't it extreme for Solus to bind you? What if that takes away the part of you that makes you, you? Helping makes me who I am. I help the hurting. That is what I do. All I do. Am. Me. And if binding you erases your mind? Your consciousness? You wouldn't make me hurt innocent people. I don't want to hurt innocent people again. There has to be some middle ground between do nothing and bind coal with blood magic. Indeed. I recall stories of amulets used by Ravani seers to protect spirits they summon from rival mages. A spirit wearing an amulet of the unbound was immune to blood magic and binding. It should protect Cole as well. The resources of the Inquisition could be used to find such a talisman. Good. They will not take me. Heard what went on in that Fade thing. What you think went on. Can't even start to believe that business. I think a lot of people are having trouble with what went on there. People going on about visions and piss when real people are gone. Dead, probably. Stroud, yeah? Lost a serious moustache there. And in trade, a busted down bunch of wardens. And they're always weird. Usually, bad stuff happens first, so you're glad when the hero shows up. But wardens are the wrong way round. They're the good thing that means a bad thing is about to happen. Like in Denerim, when the blight ended. A lot happened in Denerim. What did you see? People talked a lot about this one warden. There was a big fight and they died, or, I don't know, maybe they didn't. The hero of Ferelden. You forget the hero of Ferelden. That was ages ago. Ten years. I was playing with small painted boxes and burying stuff I stole. I remember more people cringing about magic than blight. Wardens were an excuse for your stuff to go missing. Blackwall's nice, though. Different from the adamant ones. Need more like him. You have a problem. That, over there, is a full tavern. But everyone's drinking alone. They're all up their own asses about the Inquisition. I can't have fun with everybody whinging. And they'll fall on their swords before Corifinus can push them. I'm thinking pranks. Set a few up, knock a few down. You win or not? I don't understand how annoying my people will help. Look, you have experts for everything. And I know a bunch of tight-ass people when I see them. Oh, sure, they'll complain. But they'll really mean, thank you for distracting me from the end of the stupid world. Come on! Lead the way. What, really? Really. <laughs> I knew you were different. Let's go. Right, General Uptight is gone. Have a search about. 
Find something to mess with and give your soldiers a laugh. What, the desk? Oh, yes. Center of the Empire and all that. What to do, what to do. All right, Sarah. What do you want to do? Thing looks heavy. Don't want to move or break it. I got it. Easy one. Just a slip of something under here. There. Won't notice much, but it's just that little bit wonky. He's so in control that'll piss him royally. I tell one of the soldiers and boom, the general seems like people. And since he works for you, you seem like people. Come on, next one. Right. Little lady prissy pants. Have a look for something she likes too much. Just the door, where she greets every important idiot. Yes. Well, Sarah, what do you have in mind? Um, <laughs> get a bucket. Classic, yeah? Five minutes of sloppy boss gets you weeks of happy kitchen staff. Except for the one who cleans it up, I suppose. But whatever, next stop. What's that? A locked? No, leave that. Not interested in her hidden things. Not for just a bit of fun. Maybe feed her messengers something gassy? No, bears don't pop. But they flap and... Uh... Hmm. Who is up there? Go! <laughs> that was fun. An inquisitor of the people, still remembering you're one of them. If all they got was the Herald stuff, the serious bit, you'd start to sound pretty scary. That works, but not for long. Whatever it takes. I'd start throwing pies if it kept people inspired. Pies is so good! And Carifinus would never do that. Good thing for you, innit? Because from the bottom, everyone up top sort of seems the same. Anyway, fun time, Inquisitor. You! Ulfric! You did it! <laughs>